Good morning. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church in Champaign, Illinois. We're glad that we are with you, that you are with us, and that we are together. Welcome home. Good morning, Eric. Good morning. It's good to be here. Good yeah. to be in the house of the Lord. As you are joining us virtually, it's not virtual worship. We're really worshiping. Uh, we are just joining over the, over the waves, uh, and we're grateful for that ability to do so. We're also grateful for the ability to gather in person. As you may have read recently, our uh, restrictions have have uh, been released a bit, and we are able to have more folks join us in person for worship. So no need to sign up ahead of time anymore. Uh, just come on Sundays at 1015 for a little bit longer. 1015, we'll have our in-person worship service on Sunday mornings. Uh, please do continue to wear your mask as you come to that service. We'd love to see you uh, for Sunday worship in person. And then changes will be coming over the next few months as we return to some form of uh, in-person worship uh, with live streaming, but stay, stay tuned for that information for now. Nine o'clock here online, 1015 here in person. We're looking forward to seeing you. Eric is um, uh, mentioning, I'm not sure if you use this word, but the, it's the C word, change. Oh my goodness. Change. We have a few changes coming. Uh, we're <laughs> always changing and uh, we are changing back to a new normal and that's coming down the road. Yes. Today is Trinity Sunday. We give thanks uh, to God uh, for the gift to us of God's self-revelation through what we call the doctrine of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer. Uh, it is a mystery, it is a beauty for which we pause to give thanks. Uh, also today is uh, the eve of Memorial Day. It is Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day is um, a time when we in this country pause to give thanks uh, and pause to remember those in our military who have died in the line of service. As we record this this morning, it is um, the anniversary of the evacuation of Dunkirk, which American troops were not involved, but of course that was at the very beginning prior to our entering it uh, of World War II. Mm. We pause to remember those um, folk who did not come home. Veterans sometimes say, don't remember me and don't thank me. Thank God for my brothers and sisters who did not come home. Some of us broaden the idea of Memorial Day, perhaps to include um, the um, recent death and burial of Officer Chris uh, Oberheim, who died in the line of service. And some may even in include the over 3,600 medical workers who died uh, while defending us and serving us through this COVID uh, epidemic. It is Memorial Day weekend. Let's pray. Today, O oh God, we remember those who died far away from home in the smoking field of battle, in a MASH hospital, in the arms of a comrade under the midnight care of a frontline nurse. O oh God, for all those who did not come home in their service, we thank you for them, even as we pray for peace. Um, in our own hearts and in this wide world of ours. We ask this prayer in the name of Jesus the Christ and in the power of your Holy Spirit, one God. Amen and amen. Amen. This morning we'll also take time to recognize graduates who are connected to this congregation Yay, in some graduates. way. We're thankful and excited for them as they graduate from one level of education and move on to what's next in their lives. So watch now this video of our graduates.
Join me now in our call to worship. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Let us worship God. The Lord's name be praised. Good morning. Our first hymn is We Know That Christ Is Raised. It's sung to the tune of When In Our Music God Is Glorified. Friends, join me now in our call to confession. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In confidence of God's enduring love and forgiveness, let us confess our sins to God. Join with me, please. Let us pray. Eternal God, in every age, you have raised up men and women to celebrate the faith. We confess that we are sometimes indifferent to your will. You call us to sing your praises, but we are silent. You call us to proclaim your grace, but we mumble. You call us to do what is just, but we remain idle. You call us to live faithfully, but we are afraid. In your mercy, forgive us. Give us courage to follow in your way, that joined with those from ages past, we may welcome your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. We ask this in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. Friends, the proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Christ rose for us, Christ reigns in power for us, Christ prays for us. The old life is gone, the new life has begun. Friends, believe the good news and be at peace. In Jesus Christ, our friends, our sins are forgiven. Hallelujah and amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. And thanks be to God for Mindy and Jep and Samantha who come forward for a time with children now. Good morning. Hello. Morning, Pastor Eric. Good to see you. Good to see you too. All right. Hey, Jip. Hi, Samantha. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Hey, you have pets. Do I have pets? Yes, I have two dogs, <gasps> Flynn and Abilene. Abilene. Mm -hmm. What a long name. <laughs> yeah, she's named after a town in Kansas. Cool. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you ever wear sunglasses? I do. I desperately rely on my sunglasses in the summer. 
because I know you have glasses in. Mm -hmm. So does Adam and Isaac, and sometimes they have to wear something special because, you know, they need to see, and I wondered about that. And, hey, how tall are you? Ooh, five, three-ish. Oh, you're much taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> you ask a lot of good questions. Why, thank you. I think you would have liked Nicodemus because he asked Jesus lots of big questions too. Was he short like me? You know, we sh I wish we could ask. <laughs> we could find out That'd his exact height question. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but one time Nicodemus was talking to Jesus and he had a lot of big questions for him. And he said, I know you've come from God. I know you're a teacher, but why have you come? And why do you do the things that you do? Did Jesus answer? He did, yeah. Jesus oh. answered and he said, well, I'm here so that you can be made new through God's spirit oh. and know that God loves you. I'm here to save the world. Wow. Yeah. That's so, a big answer. I was going to say, big question and an even bigger answer. Yeah. What kind of big question would you ask Jesus if you could? Oh, me? Mm-hmm. Oh. oh, I know. If, if I was sitting next to Jesus, like, like where you are, mm -hmm. and, and I was here, I would say, do you like chocolate chip cookies? <laughs> That's an important question. I, I got to know the answer too, Jip. Yeah, because I'd like to share some with him. Mm. That's a good reason to ask that question. Oh, oh and if he likes milk, because mm. I like milk with my cookies. <laughs> are chocolate chip cookies your favorite kind of cookie? Oh, yeah. Especially when they're warm right out of the oven. Mm -hmm. And nice I and like chewy those. and gooey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you're making me hungry. I'm hungry, too. <laughs> How about you, Samantha? If you sat next to Jesus, what would you ask you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, I, I think I do want to know what kind of cookies he would like. But <laughs> I think I would ask Jesus questions about different things going on in the world maybe why they happened or what I can do to be a good neighbor when bad things happen. I think I'd ask a lot of questions about being a disciple. Well, those are good questions too. Yeah, I've got plenty. How about you, Miss Mindy? Oh, um, <laughs> well, I haven't thought about that much. That'd be a big thing to be able to sit next to Jesus, wouldn't it? I think I would ask him if he was happy with what I was doing so far and how I could be better. Well, I don't know if I'd want the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, it may be hard to listen to, but I think it'd be a really helpful thing. Mm -hmm. Don't you? Well, yeah, I guess so. Let's pray, huh? That's a good idea. Who's going to pray today? I can. Okay. All right, well, let us pray. Dear God, thank you so much for sending us your son, Jesus, and for always being there to receive our questions, our worries, and our wonderings. Help us to be a good neighbor to everybody we know. Amen. Amen. All right. It was good to see you, Jip. You too. Amen. Hey, those Pastor are, Eric. Hey, those are some good questions. It would be, be hey. lots of fun to sit down with Jesus and ask hey, questions. Hey, I have a question for you. Okay, what's your question? <laughs> How tall are you? I am 6'3". Wow. I'm, I'm a little taller than, than you and, and even Samantha. Yes. That's taller. Yeah, Miss Mindy... <laughs> It's getting on up there, but uh, I think I still got her beat, too. Yeah, you're definitely taller than me. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> uh, there's others in their congregation that, that even I look up to, like uh, John Muirhead is one. Good. <laughs> Always good to see John Muirhead and look up to him. What questions might you have for Jesus? What might you uh, ask if you were directly in Jesus' presence as we are today? But we're always in Jesus' presence, so go ahead and ask those questions in prayer and commune with God. One way that uh, we commune with God and with one another is by returning tithes and offerings to God's work in this church and far beyond. So let us uh, return gifts to God now in various ways that uh, God leads us. Let us pray. Oh God, your love overflows in the gift of your spirit. Bless these gifts that we offer that they may spread your blessing in a world of need. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. God bless. Our scripture this morning is that great episode uh, of Nicodemus coming to see Jesus in the dark of the night. So listen to the story as it's recorded in John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. 
he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to Jesus, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify of what we have not seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things that you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from the heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, Blaze has our French translation this morning. Aujourd'hui, nous allons lire dans les livres des gens, chapitre 3. Premier au dix-septième verset. Or, il y avait parmi les pharisiens un homme du nom de Nicodème, un chef de Dieu. Il vint de nuit trouver Jésus et lui dit Maître, nous savons que tu es un enseignant envoyé par Dieu, car personne ne peut faire ce signe miraculeux que tu fais si Dieu n'est pas avec lui. Jésus lui répondit En vérité, En vérité, je te l'ai dit, à moins de naître de nouveau, personne ne peut voir le royaume de Dieu. Nicodème lui dit, comment un homme peut-il, peut-il naître quand il est vieux? Peut-il, peut-il une seconde fois entrer dans le ventre de sa mère et naître? Jésus répondit, en vérité, en vérité, je te l'ai dit, à moins de naître d'eau et d'esprit, on ne peut entrer dans le royaume de Dieu. Ce qui est né, Le parent humain est humain, et ce qui est né de l'esprit est esprit. Ne t'étonne pas que je t'ai dit. Il faut que vous naissiez de nouveau. Le vent souffle où il veut, et tu en, et tu en entends le bruit. Mais tu ne sais pas d'où il vient, ni où il va. C'est aussi le cas de toute personne qui est née de l'esprit. Nicodème reprit la parole et lui dit, « Comment cela peut-il se faire ?» Jésus lui répondit, « Qui est l'enseignant d'Israël qui ne sait pas cela En vérité, en vérité, je te le dis, nous disons ce que nous savons et nous rendons témoignage de ce que nous avons vu. Et vous ne recevez pas notre témoignage. Si vous ne croyez pas quand je vous parle de réalité terrestre, comment croyez-vous si je vous parle de réalité céleste Personne n'est monté au ciel, sinon Il lui est descendu du ciel, le fils de l'homme. Et tout comme Moïse a élevé le serpent dans le désert, il faut aussi que le fils de l'homme soit élevé, afin que quiconque croit en lui ne périsse pas, mais qu'il ait la vie éternelle. En effet, Dieu a tant aimé le monde, il a donné son fils unique, afin que quiconque croit en lui ne périsse pas, Mais, mais ait la vie éternelle. Dieu, en effet, n'a pas envoyé son Fils dans le monde pour juger le monde, mais pour que le monde soit sauvé par lui. Amen.
Empty hands held high, such small sacrifice. If not joined with my life, I sing in vain tonight. May the words I say and the things I do make my life song sing. I give my life a living sacrifice to reach a world in need to be your hands and feet may the words I say and the things I do make my life so writing for the Christian Century, uh, loosely suggests that this conversation that Nicodemus has with Jesus is a non sequitur. A non sequitur, according to Webster's Dictionary, of course, is a statement such as a response that does not follow logically from or is not clearly related to anything previously said. Uh, This might be a non sequitur. Where there's a will, I want to be in it. Or... um, Standing in a garage doesn't make you any more a car than sitting in church makes you a Christian. Now, those might be more formally called paraprosdokians, but this, from Bertrand Russell, is definitely a um, non sequitur. War does not determine who is right, only 
who is left. And this from uh, Groucho Marx. I've had a perfectly wonderful evening, but this wasn't it. <laughs> a non sequitur. One part of the sentence or conversation only strangely or unexpectedly or disconnectedly connects to the other part of the sentence or the statement. So Jesus, his answers to Nicodemus present a disconnect for, for Nicodemus. Nicodemus asks one thing, and Jesus' answer doesn't seem really to be the answer of Nicodemus' question, but maybe the answer to another question. Nicodemus and, and we often are stumbled or stumped by Jesus' answers here to Nicodemus. These circuitous answers to what Nicodemus may be thinking is our straightforward questions. Uh, we know you are a teacher, says Nicodemus, but that's met with one needs to be born from above. And can a person crawl back into his mother's womb, says Nicodemus? That's met with the wind blows where it will. <laughs> Flummoxed, Nicodemus sighs. How can these things be? We live in a non sequitur world. Uh, we buried a local police officer who died in the line of duty last week. Nearly one year after a Minneapolis police officer murdered an unarmed black man named George Floyd. We grieve and we pray for the safety of our police. We do. We, we, we grieve for them and their loss. It's our loss too. It's our loss too. And we pray for their safety. We do that even as we think about what policing means in our community. As we think of reform, not only reform of our police, but reform of our church, reform of our schools, reform of our politics, reform of our hearts. That Which is to say we're on a journey. We're not there yet, right? There's always room for improvement. We're always tweaking, always reforming. So we pray for and we care for our police even as we think of police reform. Some people see that as a great big disconnect. I certainly don't. We feel unsafe as citizens by the random shootings here in Champaign-Urbana. And we dial 911 so easily. We call the police uh, to protect us. And yet we consistently send them into untenable situations. And we want everything to turn out just fine. You see, we are struggling with, with this idea of caring for one another, of, of, of law and order and of grace. We expect our police to be counselors and friends and directors of traffic and nurses and so much more. Do you feel that tension? Uh, I don't mean to add to it. I just mean to kind of report what I'm seeing, what I think is happening in this community and around our country. Do you feel that tension? Do you feel some of those disconnects? You know, we are right to be thinking about strengthening the fabric of our families thinking about our schools, thinking about poverty and systemic social ills. We're right to be asking questions about such things. Oh, not anxiously, but, but just curious about and how can we contribute to be part of the answer. We're right to talk about racism and education and mutuality and trust and brotherhood and sisterhood and neighborhoods and so much more. These are good conversations to be having they they may make us a little anxious especially when they're fired by the heat of of uh, such disparity and such violence we want to have the answer right now how can these things be we say after praying through the news another night and another morning reading the headlines watching the news how how can all of these things be how can we bring it together in a way that that's beautifully, that honors our neighbors and God. How, how can we do that when things seem so far apart? Jesus, or, or Nicodemus rather, he's learning. He's learning that to love Jesus, to follow Jesus, to be curious about Jesus, to spend time with Jesus, believing in Jesus, it doesn't give us absolute clarity in all things. Nicodemus, he leaves scratching his head. How... How can these things be? <laughs> Being born again, born from above, born of the spirit, but born of, of flesh. How can these things be? 
You know, it seems to me, uh, and it may be different for you, but I want all of the scenes in my life to connect nicely and neatly, uh, serenely, from one scene to the next, dot to dot. But life is often uh, herky-jerky. It's up and down. It's a succession of near misses and head-on collisions. How can these things be? Life is such a puzzle sometimes and the pieces just don't. These pieces seem to be pieces from another puzzle, not from the one I'm working on. This disconnect, this idea that so many things are like non sequiturs. My three sons and, his, and their friends are making sense uh, mightily. They're struggling with the death of a friend they knew and loved in high school. Jeremy Chin died of prostate cancer in California. He was 25 years old. This isn't supposed to happen to their friends. It's not supposed to happen to a man so young, so vital, so smart, with so much of his future in front of him. But it did. Death came. These friends made a video they shared with Jeremy uh, several days before Jeremy died. And Jeremy, I'm told, loved loved the video. Uh, A dozen or so of these friends from high school, an art teacher and other, other friends, Put together their comments. Hey, Jeremy, you know, sorry you're sick. We're, we're there for you, man. Um, we, 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 we had such great memories with you. They share these memories. And all of these words, it seems to me, all of these words and all of the stories, uh, like of singing Twist and Shout on the band bus, all of it boils down to two words. You want to guess what those words are? Thanks. And love. Jeremy, thank you. Thank you for being my friend. Jeremy, we love you. I love you. Thank you. I love you. Thanks and love. It seems to me that's what we're left with in this story. Nicodemus leaves saying, how can these things be? But the final and the clearest word that rings truest for us is the word love. And in the biggest non sequitur of all, John tells us that God loved the world so much that he sent his son. He sent his son to die. This is at the center of our faith. Luther calls it the the whole gospel in miniature. Uh, It's a mystery at the center of our faith. What a non sequitur, huh? That God would say, I'm going to become incarnate and I'm going to send myself, my son. And I know, in my providence, I know that the people will reject this. And I know that Jesus will die. But God became incarnate anyway. Wow. That's either the greatest disconnect in the world or the most profound connection in the whole world. We live in a non sequitur world. Things don't always line up. We hold lots of things in tension, lots of perspectives, differing views. Not right and wrong, but just different. We hold these things in tension. Um, uh, They seem to conflict with one another. We want life's loose ends. We want them to come together and we want to tie it together in a shiny bow. Uh, That's what we want out of our lives. That's what we want for our kids and our grandkids. We want their lives to come together in in a beautiful bow. And when we look at a whole life, sometimes we see how God has moved through that life and how how it's all beauty and grace. But when we take a look at a sliver of that life, anywhere on that time frame, sometimes we come to a place where everything seems to be in disarray, when nothing seems to make sense, when there's no connection at all. On our refrigerator is a copy of uh, The Immigrant's Creed. And in it, it, it sort of captures the way God has entered into this world of non sequiturs. This world where things don't connect as we think they ought to connect or, or should connect. And so we read that God is in exile and leads us in exile and through Exodus. Okay, Joseph was... was enslaved in Egypt, taken from his brothers in Cana. 
Daniel was thrown into a lion's den in Babylon. Jesus was a displaced Galilean. He fled his, his home country in danger of his life. And then when he returned to his own country, he lived under the thumb, under the tyranny of Pontius Pilate, who was loyal to a foreign uh, occupying government. Jesus, an innocent man, was executed by the state and was jeered by the citizens he came to love and redeem. People of faith in following the story of God's mighty acts through Scripture, people of faith have to keep up with a lot of twists and turns, a lot of seeming disconnects, non sequiturs. The writer Frederick Beekner agrees. He writes this, If the world is sane, then Jesus is mad as a hatter and the Last Supper is the mad tea party. The world says, mind your own business. And Jesus says, there is no such thing as your own business. The world says, follow the wisest course and be a success. And Jesus says, follow me and be crucified. The world says, drive carefully. The life you save might be your own. And Jesus says, whoever loses his life for my sake, or whoever would save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The world says, law and order. Jesus says, love. The world says, get. And Jesus says, give. In terms of the world's sanity, Jesus is crazy as a coot. And anybody who thinks he can follow Jesus without being a little crazy too is laboring less under a cross than under a delusion. Those words are Frederick Beekner from uh, The Faces of Jesus, also on Frederick Beekner's website. <laughs> well, lots of disconnects, lots of confusion. Nicodemus asks simple questions and Jesus spins it out and really talks bigger. But here's the main thing, I think. The God who transcends all of life's non sequiturs loves us. And that is an amazing and settling love, or depending on your perspective, it's an unsettling love. God's love is healing, abiding, it's tough, it's gracious, it's demanding, it's radical, unbendable. It's love. It's, it's holy, agape love. And because of this love, Jesus, by the power of God's Holy Spirit, walks with us. And Jesus walks with us as one well acquainted to all the topsy-turvy ups and downs of life. Jesus the Christ is certainly acquainted with that, that uh, disconnect in life. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Nicodemus still leaves this meeting with Jesus intrigued, but confused, I think. How can these things be? Jesus spoke of a bigger picture that Nicodemus' mind couldn't get, a, get his head around. Nicodemus was ready for small bites, maybe, and Jesus shares a much bigger picture. Nicodemus couldn't grasp it, but the good news, because of God's love, God grasps Nicodemus in this grasp of grace, in this profound love. And like Nicodemus, God grasps us. God holds on to us, and God won't let go. Jesus makes it clear. The big word is love. God, God loves us. God wants us to love God. God wants us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Jesus constantly reminds us that though we may not deserve it at all, God loves us. No matter what we've done and no matter what we do, God's always going to love us, always. And God uses this love to heal the world. Right now, the sliver of life we see here in Champaign-Urbana is wrought. We, we have um, more violence than we usually have. And we have all sorts of other examples of disconnects. But God uses God's love to heal the world. And God's love is sufficient. It is sufficient. Like us, I think Nicodemus is left with only one word. God's word is love. That, that in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God loves us. God's word is love. Our word, 
our word is thanks. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? God's word to, with, and for us is love. And our word is thanks. For this wondrous love, thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. On this Trinity Sunday, let's join together in the same affirmation of faith we used last week during Pentecost. It's from the brief statement of faith. And that statement of faith has a sort of a beginning and an end, a doxological ending and a, and a gathering beginning. And then it's divided into three large paragraphs, Jesus the Son, Jesus the Father, and Jesus and God, God the Son, God the, God the Father, and God the Spirit. We'll focus on the beginning, end, and the Spirit part of that brief statement of faith. You'll see the slide appearing. Say it with me. In life and in death we belong to God through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. We trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in God the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, frees, or feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of peoples long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth, praying, Come, Lord Jesus. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. The daughter, the daughter, the daughter Domino,
please join me now in a time of prayer. Eternal God, we pray for the world that through the reconciling love of Christ, our destructive and violent ways may cease as you bless your human family with peace. We pray for the mission of your church, that empowered by your spirit, we may proclaim the good news of the age and the world you so dearly love. We pray for all who suffer, that together with Christ and his suffering, we may find healing as he did, as he was raised and exalted in you. We pray for your creation, that as it groans for its redemption, we may care for its well-being through the power of your life-giving spirit. We remember before you those who have died and pray for those who are at the point of death, that through your glorious redemption that ends all suffering, they may rest with you eternally. And we lift before you now names of those known to us in need of your tender care. We pray for Clemmy, Ackerman, and Bill, for Don Eberly and Sally, for both Mary Lou and Dave Bauer, for Steve Gritton, for Lola Ruthmansdorfer, for Jeff Smith. God, touch each of them with your healing presence, we pray. We pray prayers of peace for Chris Penny at the death of his father this past week. God, uphold him in your loving arms. And we are excited as we celebrated last weekend with Linda and Gary Peterson on their 50th wedding anniversary. What a joyful blessing that was. And oh God, continue to bless them in their marriage and their commitment to you and your kingdom. We pray now for others, other needs that we hold close in our hearts. All these things we pray in the name of the Christ who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Greetings, church. I'm as Minnie. This is Nicole Miller, and it is our pleasure to be part of this special Bible presentation that has a long tradition in our church. We have spent the last three Sundays learning about the Bible and the Ten Commandments. We learned that God gave us the commandments to guide us in our lives. The first four commandments show us how to love God, and the last six commandments show us how to love others. We talked about the meaning of each commandment and how to apply them in our lives. Here are the children of this year's class to say the commandments together. You shall have no other gods. You shall not make idols. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not lie. You shall not covet. All right. Very good, children. That's all ten. And thank you, Miss Nisi, for holding the, the cards for us. Okay, so now I am going to say the names of the children one at a time, and they will come up one at a time to read their Bible. Okay, so the first Bible goes to Miss Grace. Thank you. The second one to Jack. Karen, please. Third one to Celeste. Awesome. You're welcome. 
Our second hymn is Come Sing, O Church, in Joy. It's a familiar tune and a familiar set of words, so please join in. Raise your voices to the Lord. this place, let us go in God's peace. Let us carry with us God's love. Let us fill our heads with the knowledge that God loves us no matter what. And that God wants us to live in such a way that we bring wholeness and peace to this world that God so loves and redeems. Because of us, things may line up perfectly for us and for those we associate this week. Or maybe not. Maybe not. But we still bear peace and love, listening ears, beating hearts, a ministry of presence. Go, claiming your call to be disciples of Jesus Christ. Go with gratitude, loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, loving your neighbor as you love yourself. In the name of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, God the Sustainer. Amen and amen. <laughs>